Welcome to Coffee with the Council. I am Teresa Aronson from the St. Lucie County Chamber of Commerce. It is our pleasure, our honor, to facilitate this event every single month. Um, we are going to get started as we always do as my phone rings and vibrates. So I thought it, I forgot it was up there. So I'm just going to throw that down there. And um, we're going to get started with our sponsors. We always do. It's Mid Florida. And Mid Florida has made a point to bring us different people every month so we can learn something different about the banking industry. Oftentimes they bring us nonprofits that they're supporting. So we appreciate the that very much. So today, Crescinda's with us from Mid Florida, and she's going to talk about merchant services. Yes. So I'm Crescinda McCorby. I am actually with WorldPay, who partners with Mid Florida. So we handle the credit card portion of the business members' accounts. So we help them with trying to get out of the squares of the world, right? And some of the competitors out there. We try to do some price comparison, get them into a better program. So I, I do want to point out that we often do small business assistance things here, paychecks and payroll. And so I think it's important for the community because we have a, a large percentage of uh, self-employed and, and um, people running businesses, even managing businesses, because I use paychecks. But merchant services, everybody, I think, gets confused about this. Everybody has a PayPal account, so they can use their little square. They can attach it to their phone. They can zell it. But there's always fees attached, right? There's they always going to be a cost of business fee. Yes. yes. Um, but you want to be with a company that's backed by your bank. So that's why you a great partnership with Mid Florida. You know, that helps you. It helps you with fraud. It helps you get into the best pricing model. And it also helps you, as a business owner, dispute the disputes. Uh, well, you're absolutely right, because we've had that as a business yes. owner. Somebody said, I didn't buy this from you, and we're like, yeah. Or I never got it, or you're, I'm you happy did. for whatever yeah, yeah. reason. Yeah. Yes, and, yes. And they just don't, it, sometimes it's as simple as they don't recognize the name as it appears on your right. bill, or they forget. Mm -hmm. But you do need somebody in your corner to, to handle that for you. Otherwise, as a business owner, let's add another layer to your job. Now you're in collections. Absolutely. <laughs> right? Yes, yes. And not only do we just help them take Visa, MasterCard, Discover, and American Express all in one, we also help them with invoicing, inventory, employee control, right? So you have the paychecks that pays them, but how do they clock in and out? How do they actually run through their minutia? We help with the machines for that. Oh, very good. Yep. Yep, good. And I do know that when you use merchant services, you typically can get a lower percentage rate yes. on your fees. Yes, and we try to make it more personal for each company. So to sit here and say that I could save them millions is not going to be the option. However, we are going to save them probably two to $300 a month. It depends know, on your cost. sales. Yeah. It depends on the sales. It also depends on what you're in. Is it time to upgrade? Is it time to actually change what you're doing? That's the fearful side of it. Nah, I'm good. We're good here, right? Yeah. No, let's look at it. Do you need a point of sale now? Do you need, you know, to add a link to your Facebook space? Do you need to do that kind of stuff? Yeah. You know? I think it is a little scary. Change is scary, right? It is. For everybody. I don't care who you are. <laughs> it's scary. Absolutely. Um, and it does depend on your sales, and you can, might be able to negotiate a better weight. If you, you know, if you're selling a million dollars a month, you're probably going to get a better weight. Right than if you're selling $1,000 a month. Correct. So that matters. You know, some small businesses fear that they can't afford it, right? right? So we help them work into that as well. And what scale they actually need it on. Yeah. And not only just the little square device that follows you around mobily, yes. right? We can build your website. We can build your you know, tabletop service for your restaurant. We can do all kinds of stuff for you. Oh, that's kind of cool. Yeah. So it's not just a one-stop shop. And we grow with the member. Good. Mm -hmm. And so how do they get in touch with you if they want to um, kind of just explore it? Because that's usually, yeah. when you change services or providers, it's usually an exploration period. Yes. You're kind of dating for a little while. <laughs> yes. And so how do they start that process? Yes. So if they are a member of Mid Florida, the banker's usually reaching out to me and saying, hey, go ahead and reach out to this member. Okay. This is what their business model looks like. Here's what, you know, here's the time and date to kind of reach out to them. Um, merchant service folks pound the pavement. Right. Okay. So you may get a knock on the door and you don't want to talk to that person. Talk to your bank. If you're not actually with Mid Florida, talk to your banker and see who they're using. Okay. Yeah. And but you can always they... come out to me, Christina McCorvey, WorldPay, Mid Florida. Yeah. <laughs> I was just going to say, give them your contact information. Absolutely. Yep. Because um, that way they can just reach directly out to you. So how yep. should they get a hold of you? Yep. So I have Christina McCorvey, WorldPay with Mid Florida, and the phone number is 813. 753-1141. I'd give you the email address, but it's 10 miles long. Yeah, so. that's always a problem, right? <laughs> if you guys want to like shamelessly plug that in the Facebook today, that would be great. Or you can call any Mid-Florida credit union Absolutely. we have and, and ask them for your information. Yes, and if you're not a call for person and you just want to go online and Google it, you can go to midflorida.com and look at the business services, and they will reach out to me via that contact. 
Very good. Yeah. I like that we do this, and, and hopefully if anybody watching has some um, small business questions in, in terms of banking and human resources, because Mid-Florida is sort of all-encompassing on that. They have experts in every field. Let us know. Maybe we can schedule somebody to come on, because we have, we have HR with paychecks and merchant services and car loans and um, mortgages and home equity. So if you've got a topic you want to hear more about, let us know. And we're always helping all the small, you know, small business and medium business, anything that we can do to help you, like from the HR standpoint, every step of your business, we can help you with. That's the beauty of us. Very good. I love that we're very community oriented. Yes. And a lot of business owners don't know what they don't know, or it's time to revamp, right? If you haven't had anything reviewed in a year, it's time. And also, <laughs> all the way around. I like the idea of getting an expert. You might be the best H, you know, HVAC guy in the county, but there's aspects of the business that you can't you know, have a complete command of at all times. So I like getting an expert. Well, thank you for being with us, Chrisinda. I appreciate it. We are going to take a break and we're going to be right back for the very first time. I'm very excited. We have on the show today, Councilman David Pickett is going to make his very first appearance on Coffee at the Council. So we will be speaking with him right after this break. Thank, thank you. you. Welcome back to Coffee at the Council. I'm Teresa Aronson, and I am here for the very first time we have on the show. Um, we're excited about this. We're going to take a minute to get to know him. But, of course, it's Councilman David Pickett. You've been um, welcome. Thank you. Uh, you've been on the council for, for a while now. Two years. A couple years. And this is your first time doing the show. Yes. So we're just going to go through a little bit of getting to know you. Even if we had last time when we did that with Stephanie, we had people going, ugh, please. And I'm like, really? You don't want to know who's representing you in the community. I think it's important. So David, tell us a little bit about yourself. Um, let's see. I was born in Indiana. I, I moved down here in 1992. I spent 32 years in the Army, uh, traveled all over the world, uh, had a great time um, representing the country. And then when I got here, I decided that I wanted to do something more for the community and I wanted to give back to the community and that's what prompted me to run for office and it was a very long st painstaking process. I, I never realized running for office was so hard mm -hmm. and it, it, is, it is very hard um, knocking on doors. Um, you, you constantly, even, even when you don't feel like it, you, you, you feel you're tired or whatever, you still have to go out and you have to make them public appearances and that... Um, that to me was was the hardest because I'd, I'd work all day and then I'd come home and then I'd have to go, you know, go show up at some event and spend three or four hours there. Uh, it, but it was it was well it was well worth it. It was it was well worth it. And um, people don't realize that. Maybe that's the first time you're on the show. But you not that all of our council people don't work in some. But you actually have to go to a job for right. eight hours, a day, you know, five days a week. My, my typical day would start um, before before I come into office. My typical day would start at like three o'clock in the morning, mm -hmm. and I would drive to West Palm Beach, and I would work down there, and then I'd, I'd get home around two two thirty, and then I come home, I change clothes, and I go out knocking on doors, and just I spend. Uh, from 2.30, 3 o'clock until it got dark, just knocking on people's doors, just just to get my name out there. Because coming from, um, I coach baseball, and so outside of that, that realm of people, um, I really was unknown in, 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 in the city. Right. So to get my name out there, I, I had to go knock on all the doors. And I think um, the last count I had, it was just a little over 10,000 doors that I knocked on um, and, and made contact with, with that many residents. So. It was um, it was a, a a year's worth of work, but yeah. it, it paid off, and 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 now you know now that I got elected, um, it's 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 um, it was worth it. So you were part of that sixty percent of our population that actually leaves the county every day yes, to go work somewhere south or north, and so it makes it a little harder for people in the community to to know you and for you to get your your community. I was in that percentage when I first moved here too and wanted to give back to my community and I thought the only way I'm going to do it is if I live and work here which you now do too right. uh, not just on the council but you you all of this economic development has afforded you the ability to get another position here in the in the county which is good right and that was one thing when when I ran that I, I was I was so um, it, was, it was on my list of priorities was to bring uh, jobs to Port St. Lucie because it, like you said, I was part of the, uh, the population that left Port St. Lucie. And I would spend 10 hours, at least minimum 10 hours a week. That's, that's with good weather. Uh, if there's mm -hmm. an accident, uh, you can add another hour to it. If there's rain, you can add another hour to, to your, your commute. 
Um, so it was a minimum of 10 hours a week spent on the road, just traveling back and forth to Palm Beach. So it was very important to me. Um, and it, I was very, very happy when, when the Southern Growth Project come online to, to help get economic development here in Port St. Lucie. So people like me who traveled outside of Port St. Lucie for, for employment could actually live and work in the same community. Yeah, we've made great strides in that because I know when I first um, started working at the chamber, we were in the high 70s of people that mm -hmm. left the community. So we're down around 60, which is huge. So I'm glad that you could be one of those 18% of our population that got to come stay here. Um, I, I don't want to take away from what you have to tell us about the city. I know that uh, on the show we sometimes talk about what's going on. So it's the holiday season. Right. So I'm sure there's a lot of holiday things going on. What do, what do you have to report for us today? Well, there's, there's a lot of stuff going on in the city. And um, one thing I want to talk about tomorrow, um, we have the city center master uh, uh, workshop, the public oh, yeah. engagement workshop. And that's very, very important because um, this is the opportunity for, for the citizens to come down and you tell us what you, what, want. What you want to see there. It's, and that's at the, around the Mid Florida yes, Center. Yes, ma'am, the, the that, 22 acres that yeah. we, just, we just purchased there. Yeah. Um, so that's, that's very important. It, and and I, I always enjoy going to those because it, it's, it's always, I'm curious to see what the public wants to see. I know what I would like to see. I know what others tell me they would like to see, but it's always, it's always interesting to, I kind of stand in the back and, and just, just kind of listen to what people say to hear you know, what their, their thoughts are and, and what they would like to see uh, brought there. And sometimes there's some really, really good ideas that, that come out of that. Yeah. So that's why I'm, I'm, I'm very, uh, very anxious to see what comes out of that workshop. I am sometimes, um, a lot of times I, I feel like I know what they want. They want a, you know, a Trader Joe's. Trader Joe's, and, Costco's. Yeah, yeah. But sometimes <laughs> they surprise you and, they, and, you, and you, you're like, okay, you, right. they, these are some new and different ideas. But a lot of times it's, it's Trader Joe's and Costco and yeah. Oh, so um, our our sponsor, who's not mic'd, but that's okay. I will tell everybody what she said. <laughs> she said a tractor supply lately. What tractor? I do love a good tractor supply. I'm not even gonna lie, but um, tractor supply. That's a good one. Tractor Supply really is a rural store. Um, you can buy things there that you cannot get at Home Depot. To right. be honest with you, um, chickens at, at Easter time and. Um, traps and just a lot of stuff for farming so really right there in the middle of of port st Lucie on us1 we need a that's, hey that's what i heard all right that that's, that's might be doable to, i had a squirrel in my attic <laughs> <laughs> and you needed a trap and I, I needed a trap yeah you're so, right you're so right i ended up going to um, um tractor supply actually i went to the one in fort pierce <laughs> yeah and i mean i didn't know how to get a squirrel out of my uh, yeah so i called i called animal control and and he says, um, "That's we not don't something do squirrels. We, we don't. We don't do that." <laughs> yeah. you have to get like, okay. Um, so how do I do it? And he says, "Well, get you a can of tuna and get a trap." Yeah. I said, "Where do I get a trap? Go to Tractor Supply." Yeah. Okay. So I went to Tractor Supply. I got a. I got a trap. And I put a can of tuna in it, and I no sooner got that trap set, and I walked in my backyard, and five minutes later, squirrels in there. Yeah. I'm like, oh, all right. So. <laughs> Yeah, Tractor Supply is good for that. They also have a brand of candy that I love. They have these hot hearts, but you can only get them at Tractor Supply. Really? Yeah. And online. But wow. I'd prefer to go to an in-county store at Tractor Supply. Huh. So, yeah. Good one. Tractor Supply. So, if they want to come out tomorrow. Um, yes, 6 to 8. 6 to 8 down where? At the Civic Center. At the Mid-Florida Mid Event Florida Center? Florida Event Center, yes. you got to keep calling. If you're going to do the show, you got to call yes, the Mid-Florida Mid Event Center. Center. <laughs> They're our sponsor, so make sure you say mid -floor. You can't call the Civic Center anymore. It takes a while, but you get used to it. Yeah. Um, let's see. We got uh, also tomorrow, um, veterans of uh, St. Lucie County are having Pearl, Day, Pearl Harbor Day. Oh, very nice. That'll be at the Veterans Park. That takes place at 7 o'clock. It's kind of early, but um, it's a little ceremony to honor uh, the veterans who, who died during Pearl Harbor. Very nice. And... December 8th, we have River Nights, uh, always a great time. Yeah, River Nights are back. We only do that in season. In right? season, right. It's, uh, this, is, um, this year we moved it to, because we're doing the, um, the uh, uh, construction at the port, we moved it to Veterans Park. So um, if you've never been to River Nights, it's, it's a great night. It's a great opportunity to come out, have fellowship with, with your neighbors, um, 
bring a lawn chair, bring a cooler, yeah. listen to some live music. Um, I don't know if they'll have the bonfires down to Veterans Park like they usually had at the uh, Botanical Gardens, but they used to have a bonfire and, and... I'm getting word from the city, my producer in my ear, like we have a real production, <laughs> is saying no, no, no. bonfires. Okay, so we'll, we'll, simulate the, we'll simulate the bonfire, but uh, we have uh, live music and it's, it's always great to, to listen to live music. Um, just set out under the stars and listen to live music. So it's, it's, that's one of my one of the events that the city does that um, it's it's free um, mm -hmm. and, and it's it's a great event. Very and, good. And it's 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 been growing. We've had uh, the last time we had it at, uh, at out to the port. I think we had over a thousand people were there. Yeah, so River Nights is pretty it's pretty popular. It is. It's a great time of year. It's a beautiful place, and it's just cool enough that the mosquitoes will right. leave pretty much stay at bay. Yeah, leave yeah. you alone for a little bit. Yeah. And then uh, let's see, if, if you have kids, um, on December the 9th, we have uh, the NICE program, uh, again, at the Mid-Florida Event Center, which was, that, that one place hosts so many events for the city. Yeah, it's it's yeah. very integral in things we do. Linda um, and her team do a great job. They, they really do. Yeah. They really do. Um, the Polar Express, uh, they're having a movie, a uh, movie night, Polar Express. So it's an opportunity for you to bring your kids out, uh, you know, wear your pajamas. Uh, have movie, uh, watch a movie under the stars, and <laughs> we giggle because I see so many pajamas. Yeah, in, 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 in everyday in life, yeah. that I'm like, really, you had to mention they could wear pajamas. I saw them at Walmart this morning. Right. So, but I don't love that trend. No, it's that's not uh, it's not something that my grandmother used to. She used to um, get on to me about because I'd wear, you know, I used to work holes, jeans with holes in them in the summer. She said. You better wear some clothes that look, look like look like somebody. You never know who you're going to meet. So, but nowadays it seems like people just go out and and. Well, uh, they buy them like that. Yeah, however they want to go, they go. And I'm going to be fully disclosing that I just bought a pair last week. <laughs> I used to have some back in the '80s, but. Yeah, yeah. I should have kept mine from the '80s. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> we digress. Let's see. Also, we have. Um, Port St. Lucie uh, holiday uh, special, uh, Port St. Lucie and Lights holiday special, Sunday, December 18th, and that's going to be a Facebook Live thing um, where we're going to go around and show the 10, outra 10 most outrageous um, um, Christmas, dis yeah, Christmas displays around the city. Oh, that's kind of so cool. It, it, that should be a pretty cool event. We've done that before with buses. We tried to get businesses involved, but so I'm glad that that's coming back. Because didn't didn't you one time you sponsored uh, you had like two or three buses and you you went around touring the different. We tried and we were trying to get businesses to have a contest and we were offering there in some incentive, but it didn't. Um, they weren't doing it as much as we planned, and a lot of our businesses here in the city were um, along strip malls, and so it just wasn't the spectacle that we had hoped but we'll try it again M maybe, not this year but yeah maybe we should try to get businesses to sponsor some of the some of the bigger christmas decorations around the city yeah and brought to you by get, get you know more involved brought to you by mid florida yeah <laughs> well they brought you an entire event center so <laughs> <laughs> and let's see december 31st we have the winter wonderland light show at the community center so that's it's going to be synchronized music and and I don't know if you've seen the lights that the light show, that, mm -hmm. the lights that they have out there now, um, but it's going to be synchronized to music, so it's going to be on New Year's Eve. So that should be a pretty, pretty fun, pretty fun event. Good, um, good. And then I've got a few other. Um, they're more personal. Um, these are not city events, but uh, I, I recently had a um, uh, went before council and 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 talked about. I want to bring a monument for PTSD survivors, mm -hmm. or not survivors, but the families the of people, yeah. right? Um, to uh, st the Stars and Stripes Park. So that's something that I'm working on. And um, I, I know that the chamber helped me uh, put together my, my, um, my veterans organization. And that finally, I finally got everything all together, all the paperwork for that. That was a, I, I never realized it was such a, 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 a task putting together something like that, but it was, it was quite, if quite the task. If it's a nonprofit, yeah, it could definitely be a task. Yeah. You, you have to have officers and, <laughs> registrations everywhere, yes. and then every year you're going to have to submit paperwork. Yes. But, but yeah, we're happy to help. So just let us know. You know, like yeah, Meredith was, she was a big help to me, and um, I know I, I submitted everything through through the IRS, and then I got a I got a letter back saying they needed they needed budgets, and and so I called the guy and I said, 
you realize this is a startup, right? There, I don't have a budget. Yeah. <laughs> I said, the budget is whatever money I put into yeah. it so far. He's like, we still need a, a working budget. Up. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's what he told me. He said, make it up. I'm like, okay. So that's what I did. And, yeah. and But um, the chamber was very, very um, helpful in, in helping me get that uh, started. So I'm very thankful for that. Good. In between segments, somebody asked us about our help for small businesses, and we we don't say it enough, but the chamber is here to help small business from everything, from filing your first paperwork and where do I file that, how do I do that, to business tax licenses, to opening up your commercial space. We have partners that we work with, and 90, I would say 95% of it is free, right? We don't charge, and you don't have to be a member of no. the chamber, you just um, come to us and we're happy to help, because that's what we're here for, that's what the chamber should be doing for its community. Well, I was unsure because I, I figured, you know, Chamber of Commerce, I figured, you know, business, I'm thinking business, right? And then I called down there and, and, and she's like, Meredith's like, no, come on in, we'll, we'll sit down, we'll have a talk, okay. Mm -hmm. And she steered me in the right direction. I mean, there was a lot of things that I, I had already um, had, had wrote down that I needed to do, but there was a few extra things that she said, no, you need to do this and you need to do that, yeah. um, that, helped, that helped steer me. You know, and, right and yeah, and, and I was really surprised that um, that you went as far as to help nonprofits. Oh, for sure. Yeah. For sure. We have a lot of nonprofits in St. Lucie County. We do a lot for our nonprofits. Yeah. We love them as friends. But um, Margaret in my office is uh, she spent seven years at the state uh, house. And so she has a lot of background and a lot of regulatory processes. Yeah. So she's very good at helping people through that and she gets it. So we're happy to have her and we're happy that people are using it and they know more about it. We're featured on the website now and we help, uh, we're getting into the thousands of people this year that we've talked to about their business, whether it's starting up or expanding or um, a lot of times we get them after they've run into an issue and we try to help them navigate that. But either way, we are, we've touched probably a thousand, uh, almost a couple thousand businesses through that program. Wow. So, Unbelievable. yeah, individual businesses, that's quite a bit, so we're happy to do that. I also want to give a shout out today before we take questions. I was at um, Publix, and you always wonder, is are people watching the show, right? We're on public access, so yeah, right. it's, it's not a far reach to ask that question. And um, the, the cashier, and I mention this because the cashier recognized me, but for the first time he knew that I did not work at the city and that I actually worked at the Chamber of Commerce. And he knew the actual name of the show, and he said, but you recently changed it. It's Coffee with the Council now. And I couldn't believe <laughs> that Alejandro at Publix um, over in Darwin Square knew all of that. Usually they think I work for the city. They don't know the name of the show. They, you know, they can't. A lot of times I get, do you work with my cousin at the bank? You look familiar to me. But Alejandro knew exactly what everything was going on. It was yeah. really nice. When, when I first was running for office, and you really started paying attention to everything going on and, and, and all the different things that you needed to pay attention to, um, I actually thought you worked for the city. Yeah. Because I, I would see you on, on, on Facebook Live and, and I thought you worked for the city. And, and it, wasn't until, <laughs> it wasn't until we had the, um, um, we had your, I, I say debate, um, that I figured out that, hey, you don't work for the city, you I work for the Chamber of Commerce. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I think that um, people do struggle with that, because I do, I also do this show with the Board of County Commission, and right. you know, I do one with the Mets, and I was on a trip with the Mets, a PR junket in, with the Mets, and I was helping with travel, and they're like, oh, you work for the Mets? I'm like, nope. I feel like everybody thinks I work for everybody, but never the Chamber. So for Alejandro to know that was really kind of, kind of one, funny. There's one more thing I want to talk about. Okay. Um, I have, uh, I have a veterans newsletter that, that um, I started posting. It actually came out last month. Um, it's something that I, f I felt very strongly about. Oh. Um, I wanted to, to make kind of like one-stop shopping for the veterans here at Port St. Lucie. We have a, a very large veteran community in, in, we do. in Port St. Lucie. Which is why we got the um, retirement facilities, because right. we have a very exactly. large, yeah. And um, so what I want to do was to, to put together a newsletter and it's, it's a monthly newsletter, and it's, it's available on my webpage um, on the city. Um, and basically, it's like one-stop shopping for veterans. I, I have a, a, a topic that I highlight every month, um, okay. and then um, I'll bring forth, uh, uh, like last month I talked about uh, the burn pit registry, um, the uh, Camp Lejeune, which everybody sees on TV. Yes, that's uh, a big, uh, you know, personal uh, injury push right now. Next month, I'm going to 
a partner with Congressman Mass' office. Um, and he's pointing because Angel Robinson. Angel, Angel Robinson. Um, Congressman Mass is in the audience. Today. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to partner with them and, and, and highlight. Uh, it's a sacred. What's, what's sacred? What's the name of it, Angel? Oh my goodness. Uh -huh. Yeah, right. I, put Angel on the spot. I'm sorry, but anyway, <laughs> it's, it's it's an opportunity for veterans to sign up, um, and 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 tell your story. Yeah. And and have your story basically archived at at uh, here here in the county. So you know it. You become part of history, and when you think about it, um, the things that we did and and the uh, um, things that we saw, that is history, and and what better viewpoint to tell it than from from the First person man. on the ground, yeah. you know, the guy on the ground. So um, when when she, uh, she sent it to me, I I I, re I, I looked it over and I'm like, oh my gosh, this is this is, we need something like this. And I immediately went on and signed up. So that's going to be the, the topic of my discussion next next month. And where can they find your newsletter? Um, it's 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 on the city's website. Okay. And it's under um, under my personal page. Yeah. Oh, okay, very good. And and there's a link there to sign up, and and click on it, sign up, and it gets sent to you every month. Very good. So uh, last month I had uh, we we sent it out probably 200 people. About 200 people nice. um, from from uh, stuff that we had, and, I, and I've gotten some more uh, email lists that that compiling together, uh, and and the response that I, I received was 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 very very positive, very positive. So it, it made it made me feel good to to know that um, something that I've wanted to do for such a long time is is is, is being well received is being received and, it, and it's it's touching people's lives. Good. And that's that's the whole premise of what I why I did it. Um, my incoming chair, Andy Treadwell, is the uh, president of the Pruitt campus here, yes. and he has a veteran center out there. And maybe we should hook the two of you up because they have taken the Shriver Center and turned it into a veteran right. center, and it's really for veterans to hang out in and to get resources. And they've done a wonderful job over there, Andy, and and, and everyone at, at the Pruitt Center has has done a wonderful job for veterans, and and they really go out of their way to to make uh, things accessible for veterans to 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 learn and, and, and continue learning. Good. So it's it's it's, it's a great a great center there. Project for you. Oh, most definitely. Great. Most definitely. Yeah, most definitely. For sure. Good. Well, um, do we have any questions from our audience? Oh, yeah. Well, uh, Mike. Oh, none from <coughs> Facebook. That's OK. But we're going to get you the mic before we, if you don't mind. Otherwise, it just looks like we're staring off into the audience of silence. <laughs> And then we're randomly, randomly answering questions that nobody heard asked. Well, hi there. I'm hi. Wayne Landry. I have a lot of experience with uh, David here. He's helped us a lot. I live in Del Webb in tradition. Oh, yeah. We have a veterans group of over 75 veterans, and that's not all the veterans we have, because we, I think we have like 800 people in there. We have a retired uh, nuclear submarine captain cool. there. We have Annapolis graduates. There's some high-end people in this development. And we have a quarterly uh, veterans meeting, which David should show up at, and ah. that would be good. I would love to. Okay, and, and we have, we try to do every, we try to do it quarterly, and we have somebody get up and talk about their experiences with the service. And this guy that graduated from Annapolis was in the <clears throat> Navy, and it was very interesting. Everybody has an interesting story to tell. So I think that that's going to be great. In fact, I run the Adopt a Street uh, program for mm -hmm. Del Webb, and I'm the ambassador for the city for the Adopt a Street. I work with David, but also um, we had a guy we called Marine Mike. He was 96 and still doing Adopt a Street, and he was driving the golf cart mm. on Adopt a Street. He did it. He just passed away at 96. And he drove the golf cart like two weeks before he passed away. So, I mean, and they, we have ceremonies up there all the time for veterans. We just had one last week so uh, for Veterans Day. So when Veterans Day, we had a, a big deal. So, and people in there support veterans big time. Good. So I'll get you lined Wait, up. Just get, just get a hold of me, and, and I'd be happy to come out any anytime and, and, and talk or, or, or even just show up to a meeting because it, it's interesting to – to um, for me being a, a you know a long time veteran, it's interesting to hear stories from from you know guys who who was in before me and and 
we serve, you serve and you have a lot of commonality, but there's, there's differences that, that everyone brings to the table. And it's very interesting to hear the, you know, the World War II guys, the Korea, uh, yeah. um, it's interesting for guys. the general public, though, too, to be honest right. with you, to hear their stories, not just amongst, you know, former military, but, but the civilians, it's still very interesting to hear it, it their is. stories. Yeah, for sure. Well, we, had, um, we have a lot of, um, we have, I think, at least one Korean veteran, and we have a lot of Vietnam veterans, needless sure. to say, well, tons of them. <laughs> so um, we're really be happy to have you, David, and I'll set it up, you know, I guess. Yeah, just yeah. let me know. Another thing David's been very handy with, um, He's held two already, two uh, tours of the uh, FedEx plant, the new FedEx plant. Oh, yeah, yep. So for Del Webb, he handled two tours, and we did it earlier in the year, and we're doing two more in January, and the tours are all filled. Um, I'm in the economics club, and I'm running the tours. Well, we've, we tour a lot of places, but uh, David's been great, and every time I've ever contacted him about anything, he's always got back to me right away, and it's, it's been wonderful. I've, good. It's a pleasure knowing him. Well, good. Thank you, Wayne. Have you done, um, Tamco does Money tours. So <laughs> <laughs> Tamco does tours, too. You should take him out for that one. They do a good tour, too. Well, I, I have an inside at FedEx, so. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it works at FedEx, so he's oh. very easy for him to set that one up. And they even do a Dr. Street, and they do Sands Home Boulevard. Yeah. Right there where the plant is now. Yeah. On Adopter Street, which is great. Good. Well, it's, it's always nice to, um, like Wayne contacted me right after we had first opened over there and, and wanted wanted a tour. So I talked to I talked to our big boss and he's like, sure. She's, but there was, don't do this and don't do that. I can't. I have to basically keep them on the outside. I can't take them back where. Yeah. Um, but they can see what goes on. But it's it's still interesting to see, um, the the. The stuff that goes on. Yeah, yeah the, there's a lot of liability. FedEx is not like, oh yeah, just you know. Yeah. Come so, on in. <laughs> um, but it's all. It was. It, it was fun for me because, you know, you get to bring, um, like, you drive down the road and, and like you said, Tamco, you see that big building, beautiful mm -hmm. lights on it. I don't have a clue what goes on inside there. And it's pretty interesting. And um, since they're they're not FedEx, the corporate giant, they actually kind of you do sort of walk around and dodge a couple things right so um it's it, it's a it's a really good tour frank mcshane yeah mcshane and justin o over there they they give tours all the time they have a little classroom set up for it but if you need a um if you want to take your your wanna, group your veterans group or del webb out there i'll get you a contact I do you want to go through there and, and and then you know like taking them through fedex um i think there was 30 people uh, yeah we had 30 people the first two 15 uh, yeah we did two two 15 group two two groups of 15 and um because I, I, I told him, I said, let's limit it to 15 people because um, that facility is so big. Mm -hmm. And trying to talk and, and trying to corral 15 people and keep them together and, and, and talk and, 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 you know, voice your, you know, loud oh, yeah. enough for everyone to hear um, mm -hmm. yeah. gets to be, you know, at the end of the, at the, end of the tour, it's, you know, your, your throat's kind of, kind of So sore. you're talking to the woman that facilitates 30 people in yeah. leadership class <laughs> and has done that for over 10 years. Right. So I definitely feel your pain. So <laughs> we, um, we limited to 15 people and, and we took a little over an hour, but they, they seen, you know, basically what happens from the time your package gets there to what happens when your package leaves. And they have a, had a better understanding of, of, of how that building works and the integral workings of it. And, and um, now when you know when you see it, at least when they see a FedEx uh, um, trailer going down the road, they can think about, oh, well, they do this and this and this, and then it gets back on a trailer and then goes out that way. Yeah. So it was, uh, it, it was, it was fun. Pretty cool. Uh, oh, oh. Del, Del Webb has also done a Tamco tour. They gave us a three-hour tour there. They catered a breakfast in for us. Uh. And I think we had 33 people there. And we went through the manufacturing. That place is, you never know what's going on in there unless you're in there. That place is super interesting. Because oh, so you already did Tamco. Parts. They got a, um, a paint shop in there. There's not even any paint around, you know? I mean, it's, <laughs> it, it's, it's, it's there's, it looks perfect. It's like you could eat off the floor in there, and they're painting things in there. So I the should FIU? have known that Tampa already reached yeah. out. FIU? Yeah, we did FIU. We did um, four tours at FIU. 
Uh, we've done Walmart distribution center in Fort Pierce. Mm. People are on me all the time about. And another one that I put together and I'm, I didn't have to really run it was the Adams Ranch tour, which is, the money is given to the Audubon Society. My wife and I went on that last year. Um, we put it to Del Webb, the Economic Club, and I think we probably have 30 or 40 people going out of 210 spots. It's already booked up for January and February. There's some stuff left in March, um, but that's a great tour, and the Audubon Society gets some money for that tour. Yeah, Del Webb does it. They they have their the Economic Club, and and they do a very good job about having you know different, different tours for for, for, yeah, for everyone like to it. do. Yeah, so very good. Baker. Sure, absolutely. Love. The, I would love to. I do do some speaking engagements at all, at the communities a lot. I usually bring uh, prizes and do games about and do trivia and different things about the community. So I'd love to do that at Dell Web, for sure. All right. Do we have any other questions? We don't have any questions online, so we're um, we're good. Is there anything else you want anybody to know? Good. Um, we're we're doing a rotation now, so we'll see right. you again on the show, which okay. I'll look I was, forward I'm, to. I'm glad that I I finally got an opportunity to come out here because I I feel like you were reluctant because everybody's like I don't really know. No, I I actually um I told I told uh, Brad and my assistant I said let me do December because there's a lot of stuff to talk about in December. <laughs> <laughs> you can just you can go through. That the was list a good. It was a good way to ease, ease into, into it. it. Yeah. 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 So. It's, once people come on, it's really very easy. Yeah, you yeah. know, we're just going to talk a, a little bit, and typically I try to know a little bit of something about the person that I'm right. talking with before we start. So it, it goes quick. Thank you for having me. Well, thank you for being here. I, I appreciate. It. I'm very excited for this coming year and doing the yes. rotation and, and allowing our community to meet all of our representation here on the council. So very good. I want to thank uh, Mid Florida, of course, as always, and the staff here at the city and my staff as well. Uh, it's a moving target, as, as you all know, and we'll try to keep it. We always try to keep it to the same day, but I, I would be lying if I said we have done that recently. But January 1, we're going to try to, to steadfast the same day because we want people to come down. This is your opportunity as a community to come down here, yeah. And um, and you, you don't have to ask your question during. Um, whoever's representing is happy to speak afterwards or before. So come on down. Next time you see this, come across your Facebook feed or on the city's website or our own. We'd love to have you here in person. Um, with that, have a great day, everybody, and we'll see you next time. Thank you. Thank you.